Sweden in 1996, decided to decarbonize their society and to shut down their nuclear power plants. They closed their two biggest nuke plants, slapped a $150 ton tax on carbon, and Sweden's economy since 1996 has grown by 45%, while its energy use has dropped by 9%. Brazil, 20 years ago, decarbonized its transportation grid, and as a direct result of that choice, Brazil, while the entire world economy spiraled and collapsed, Brazil continues to enjoy the longest, most robust economic expansion in the history of Latin America. The Brazil this year will displace France as the, as the fifth richest country on Earth. Costa Rica, at the same time, decarbonized their electric grid. And as a result of that, Costa Rica, which is the smallest country in Central America, is by far the wealthiest. Its economy is larger than most of its neighbors combined. You can go on and on with those examples. But we in our country have much greater geothermal resources than they have in Iceland. My home in Mount Kisco, New York, is powered by geothermal. Virtually every home outside of the major cities in our country could be. But almost nobody uses geothermal because of the illusion that geothermal is more expensive than the incumbents. It isn't. If you added the subsidies, it's far less expensive. But the market, the, the subsidies have distorted the market and sent the wrong signals to purchasers and consumers. So very few people use geothermal, which is far cheaper than oil and coal and you know, doesn't get us in wars in the Mideast and doesn't impose all these other costs in our society. Um, we're the number one in the world for wind. The Great Plains states are the Saudi Arabia of wind. We have enough wind. In fact, North Dakota is the windiest place on Earth at sea level. We have enough wind, according to a recent report by the Scientific American in, uh, in Montana, North Dakota, and Texas to provide 100% of the, of the energy grid for the US and Canada three times over, even if every American owns an electric car. We're number one or two in the world for for solar, the uh, Scientific American report showed that we could power the entire existing US energy grid from an area of the desert southwest that's 75 miles by 75 miles, about 19% of the most barren desert land. The, we have, I've been privileged to be an advisor to the, um, to the current administration, the Obama administration on energy policy. All of the leaders of that administration, Stephen Chu, Ken Salazar, Lisa Jackson, and the others, want to transition us to a new energy economy. The barriers are these, and this is the answer to your, the long answer to your short question. <laughs> Number one, um, the, the unfair advantage that the incumbents have because of the subsidies that are flowing to them, so we're not playing on a level playing field. Obama tried to correct that first by abolishing the subsidies, the direct subsidies, like the oil depletion allowance, which is 35 to $55 billion a year, and the waiver of royalties to the oil industry, and um, to address the indirect subsidies through the carbon uh, tax and uh, you know, to the, you know, the cap and trade system, and that failed. But even with the subsidies, because of innovation, the, the cascading innovation that we're seeing in solar and wind, those renewables are now approaching parity with the incumbents, even with the huge advantage, unfair advantage they have in the marketplace. Number two, this is the most important, we don't have an energy grid in this country that can carry these new currents of energy. Our energy grid is antiquated, it was underbuilt, it is already overpowered, and it's misaligned. It doesn't reach the big wind centers in the Midwest, the solar centers in the desert southwest, and it is it's smart. It is dumb. Uh, it's a dumb grid, and it does not. Uh, it does not. It's incapable of doing long haul transmission of energy. Virtually every farmer in the state of North Dakota wants to put wind turbines on their property. And you have huge mountains of private capital. From, I'm on the board of the biggest green tech venture capital firm in the country, which is located right here in San Francisco, Vantage Point, and by far the most profitable. There are, um, and in fact, they're, the, they're, they're among the top uh, performing venture capital firms in any uh, discipline, in any space. So um, uh, they want to go into North Dakota and build wind farms. And, and, and big players like Siemens, Investus, and General Electric, and Warren Buffett, and T. Boone Pickens all want to go there. There's huge piles of cash surrounding the state of North Dakota waiting to flow in and build turbines on every property. Every farmer in North Dakota wants to build the turbines. Why? Because a North Dakota wind farm 
Uh, North Dakota corn field is worth $800. If it's got a wind turbine on it, it's worth $3,000. We have the ability now to, with wind, to create prosperity in, in declining rural economies, to create jobs, um, and to enrich farmers, and to allow them to hold on to their farms, which is a really critical part of democracy. The problem is the North Dakota wind farmer cannot get his product to market, the, the electrons to market, because the electrons will diffuse in our current lines before they cross the North Dakota border. So they can't reach Cincinnati or Cleveland, Columbus, St. Louis, New Orleans, or New York. And we need to build a grid system in our country. And the Obama administration is now doing this piece by piece, a unified national grid that will connect these, um, you know, the, the, the renewable power generation centers to the markets in our country. The same way that Eisenhower built a national highway system back in the 60s, we need to do that with the grid. And we need to build a smart grid. And yesterday, the headlines in many papers across the country were that Obama's going to make this one of his primary um, objectives between now and the election to start implementing the smart grid in our country, and, and that's very, very encouraging. Uh, and the third uh, issue, the impediment that they, um, that they face is that we have an arcane, we have a, a balkanized system where we have 50 public utility commissions in the 50 states and 120 control districts, each with their own arcane and Byzantine set of rules that restrict access to the grid. What we need, what the Obama administration understands, is a unified national grid that acts as a marketplace where everybody, people like me, I, you know, I produce far more energy than I use in my home. I ought to be able to sell that surplus onto the grid and make market rates for it. Today, there's very few places where you can do that. Every American ought to be able to do that. We need to create a national market where everybody can participate, one that democratizes our energy system in this country rather than, than one that creates oligarchies. And, and uh, you know, the economic system, the political system reflects the economic system. And if you have an energy sector that's controlled by a couple of people, you ultimately are going to have a, a politics that is controlled by a couple of large corporations, which is not good for our, for our country. We need to create a marketplace that does what a market is supposed to do, which is to reward efficiency, re to reward good behavior, which is efficiency and to punish bad behavior, which is inefficiency and waste. Right now, we have a marketplace that is governed by rules that were written by the incumbents, coal, oil, and nuke, to reward the dirtiest, filthiest, most poisonous, most destructive, most addictive fuels from hell, rather than the cheap, clean, green, wholesome, safe, and patriotic fuels from heaven. And we need to change that <laughs> dynamic around.